And someone put yes. It's tough. I was just... It was right there. Well, there we are. They can see me dancing. Oh, no. Oh, there we are. What was that? All right. Compliance. We're gonna get another set of those. So what's up, guys? This is Admin Lee. And this is Abigail. And we've got the uh, SBO Six Plus. It arrived in the mail today when I got off of work. It was sitting on the porch. I posted a picture of it on my book or on my Facebook. I'm sorry if I haven't responded to any comments that you may have left about it. I've been trying to set this up so we could get this going. I don't have my original table that I used because I've got printers sitting on it. I haven't built my new table yet. So um, I had to use my kitchen table. <laughs> So we're going to jump right into it and get this thing opened up. Uh, hopefully, if you guys have any questions, you can ask in the chat. I believe I'll be able to see your questions over here on this other screen that I had set up. Um, so if you have anything you want to ask, Abby's really good at following chat. She will likely let me know because I usually get pretty into the assembly. Hopefully it doesn't take as long. <laughs> on this one, uh, hopefully it's as easy as the SBO6 was. I think Abby had her, I helped her a little bit, but I think she had her set up in about 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know anything about the setup on this one, on um, how fast it's supposed to be. I've been working two jobs lately, so I haven't been able to be home very much, although one of them I'm not being paid for. One of mine and Brittany's friends had bought a restaurant and opened it up, and I've been going there and working in the evenings after I get off my factory job to try and help them out with their opening and hoping they will be successful in it. So, we got the top open. You got your piece of foam on top, as usual. Uh, they did give us a roll of filament. It doesn't look to be very much. Uh, it's 200 grams, so this is what I call like a quarter roll. It's so a little bit make, less. It's enough to make roll. one of those little boats. It's enough yeah. to make one of those little boats. Yeah, we'll use this to print a venti, venti boat. But uh, people all kept saying they want to see the printers come with filament, so they at least put some in this one. Unlike the SVO6, it, uh, the regular one, it did not have filament. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a leveling guide. There's your leveling guide. It looks almost similar to the SVO6. Um, here's the manual that comes with it. Uh, it's got all the assembly instructions in it. Whew. So we'll need to keep this close by. It's a little compartment. 
compartments. Remember that. Yeah. There's compartments. They do like to hide stuff in here. So there's two doors on top that have these little pieces of foam that you can uh, pull parts out of, maybe. This looks like to be the touch screen. There's the tool head. is in the bag. It looks like it might be the same one as what's on the SVO2 actually. Um, which I have right here. This came off my SVO2 when I replaced it. They look to be maybe the same screen. So I may already have a spare in case something happens to mine. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I have no That's idea. The spool holder. There's the spool holder, and here's the uh, flexible um, filament sensor. Filament runout sensor. The tool head looks to be. Okay, so here's the high flow block that the other one does not have. It's obviously a little taller, a little more space in between the fan here on the tool head because of it. Uh, other than that, it looks to be the same. I'd be curious to know if this would work on the SVO6, if it would fit in there. If you could just take one of these tool heads and put it on the other one, that would be nice. Now let's set that aside. Of course, you got your... Uh, Toolbox. Yes, regular old toolbox. With the... Um, comes with the paint spatula. People say it's oil paint spatula. That's great. I love those. Um, more mounts, filament mount. The uh, high flow, extra, extra high flow nozzle. Looks like a volcano nozzle, possibly. You get another nozzle wrench. Um... You know, I'm curious. They asked us what kind of tools we would like or what we would like to see with a printer or with them releasing one. And uh, we mentioned, I know a lot of people mentioned a burr remover. I don't see one of those, but one thing I do see in here that I haven't seen from Sobel yet, I don't know if it came with the SVL1 or SVL1 Pro, is this thing. So if you got a clog, you can stick this down in there and push the clog oh. through real easily. That's really nice to have there. I'm glad they put that in there. Thank you for that, Sobel. We love you, Sobel. That's it. We at least got that that tool. I don't see a burr remover. Um, they're pretty cheap, though, on Amazon. I think you can get them for like six to eight bucks or on AliExpress. So. I don't even know what a burr remover, remover looks like. We didn't like. get one of those guys. It was like, that's all right. We will need these tools and everything else. Put this one. Another pair of filament snips. I've already got like eight of these things floating around. You only have four. Now you have five. Yes. Right. Chicken. Nothing in there? Nope. Okay. There's that piece. Oh, there. that's big. Yeah. A lot bigger than SPO6. A lot bigger. Almost 50% bigger. Oh my Almost. gosh. Where are we going to put it? On this table for now. I don't know. We'll have to maybe move your bed out or something and put it in there. My bed? Ain't no way this is going to. Here's the power supply. Power supply looks to be the same one as it came with the SPO6, which I love these. Um, I just love the way they're the casing and stuff around. I like the fact that it's black. It's not shiny and silver. Is that plug different? That looks a little different than the other yeah, one. Yeah, I think it's different. Or maybe it's not the same power supply because this plug is different. Yeah, I think it's the same brand anyways. The plug looks a little what? different on it. Let's get this. I believe the other one was like a round plug. Let's see if there's 
There's a plate. This is attached to that. It's all one piece here. Yeah. Here's the, I don't know what you call them. The, the top column's thing. on the side. This is the gantry right here. They can't say it. <laughs> oh. It's obviously visibly a lot larger. Set this on the couch right here. Should be good. It'll be fine. The only downside to filming live is if I break something and they caught me, they know it was me. <laughs> More foam. This foam, guys, it, it, it's actually good to keep for if you're making helmets or something, which I plan on doing with this printer. You can use this foam for like uh, to make it fit your head better, the helmets and stuff. You can cut it up and put it in there. There's a little bit of cushion. Well, yeah, a little bit. Oh, a lot. There's a lot of foam in here. This thing should ship to you pretty well. It looks pretty well packaged. Nothing in here is moving around, that's for sure. When it's all packaged up. Okay. Hold on. Let me look in here, make sure they didn't hide anything. We have some gummy bears or something. Oh, I would love some gummy bears. You guys didn't put a snack in here for us or something, did you? Any hidden gems? Hello? No. All right. Take this box out of here. All right. So here's the bed. It looks like the assembly is going to be just as easy as the S306 since this is all in one piece already. And this thing is enormous. I have a ruler here. What? As you can see, the bed is flat. There's no gaps. It's not really big enough to go diagonal all the way across. It is flat as can be. It's not up in the air at all. But it is at least a foot. All the way down. Across. From left to right. It is completely flat. A lot of problems that people have with uh, the leveling that they don't realize that since there's two z-axis screws uh, one gets higher than the other and the auto z-level mechanical feature raises it up and it just bounces off the top it doesn't have a driver that controls each motor but i've, I've heard uh, i've seen that rory and another guy has made some firmware that will control them individually i haven't tried it yet because like i said i've been very very busy uh trying to get things done so um i have not seen that but i don't use the auto z axis though i just use my micrometer and i measure it which i'm going to show you guys and then i make sure that they're even and that way i know that the gantry is level Can you help? Yeah, we're gonna need to get here. Eat it. I need it. We gotta get the screws out here. They should be in there. So here's some of the assembly stuff that you use. This is oh wow. Hi, hi May. Hi May. They can hear you through the microphone. <laughs> this is a, a filament spool. It has bearings in it. This is very awesome. I love this. So now you won't have that noise that a filament roll makes whenever it starts to get low or whatever. It gets real dry and it starts scraping. This has bearings in it and it just rolls. Yeah. Here are the screws. Screws. They're all in bags, labeled, of course, even with the steps. And by the way, guys, if you haven't gotten yourself one of these, I got one for Christmas. 
and it works amazing. And it has holes in the top, so you can leave your filament rolls in there and use it at the same time. Whoops, I just started it. Uh oh. The buttons are very touch sensitive on it. They work very well. So here's step one. So we're gonna need these first. Does it say step one on it? Yep. Oh wow. So the bags are labeled. By They've step. been labeled. I don't think they were on the other one. All right. So yeah, step one is these screws and putting this bad boy on there. Which I think I have facing the correct way. Most likely. Hmm. I can tell you that. Oh. It's fine. All right. So we got the booklet. Want to make sure it looks like the they have maybe. This is correct. It is facing the right way, because that's the front of the printer. It's hard to tell that there's washers on these when they get up there, but it looks like that does have a washer. This one has a wash. No, this one does not. All right. This one doesn't have a washer. Actually, I don't think any of them do. That's just a line in the screw. It is. I know in the past we've gotten these and we didn't think they had a washer on them because it was pushed up against there so flat it just blended in. And it says to put the screws in from the side. Mm -hmm. What uh, screws in do we need? So you take two of them. These, um, the screwdriver is probably going to be one of those type things. Wait. Let me get my little righty printer toolkit here and I'll have one too. It's this size. I don't even know what this size is. Other, <laughs> other people in the group do. It's an M5 uh, wrench. All M5, right. So that's an M5 by 50. Four inches long. Well, that's the screws. Or four centimeters or something. Yeah. M5 is the hex nut size. Is it this one? Yeah. Too big. No, that looks like it. Looks to be about the same as this. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That scared me. It's like, what? And we don't want to tighten these all the way down just yet until we get them all in there. That's another thing. Don't if you tighten one screw at a time, it can pull the top one way, and then when you tighten the other, it's already stuck one way, and you can't pull it back the other. All right. I don't know if that's a real thing, but it sounds like a real thing. Oh. I know it was with my Ender. Um, you weren't supposed to tighten them all at the same time. You were just supposed to do them a little bit each time as you go around. All right. I'm gonna tighten this. Top one up a little bit. I don't have a square. I've never gotten a printer that wasn't square. But that looks to be flat and square. So I shouldn't tighten it all the way? Yeah, you can. Oh. Only the top one? No, you can do the bottom one too. Because I have these screws in too. So it yes, can't. it is the plus. This is the SV06 plus. Yes. And yes, I purchased this. Sobel did not give it to me. They did not give me faster shipping than anybody else. I was at work, excited to make the purchase. I got onto the website and I just kept refreshing it about 10 till. <clears throat> and I noticed, actually, it was about 7 till. And I noticed they were. For I can't sale. tighten it anymore. And I went ahead and made my purchase real fast. I was shocked to see them a little bit early um, for sale, but it was. So I immediately put my purchase in. And later on that evening, I got a confirmation saying that it was on the way. I was a little surprised. Do you have any cookies left? Because I thought it was going to take a little while. And I'm glad they did it this way. They were already set up. Ready to start making people happy immediately. What's that, Abby? Cookie? Is there a cookie left? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to give the cat a biscuit. 
Fuck. Where are you? Oh, mo. <laughs> All right. Step one is done. Here's step. Or no, that was step two already. Oh. Step two was putting in the screws. I don't know why. Where, where's step two? The, where's the? Okay. Hmm. Step one, step. It's super hard to hear us. Uh oh. Can you hear me very well? <laughs> I can maybe try to move the mic up a little bit closer. My mic is in my sweater. Can you hear me better now? I tested earlier and it seemed loud enough. I don't know. May have been because it was a little below my chin, but I have it up to my mouth now. Not really up to your mouth. Yeah, it is right there. It's like your chin. So the book doesn't say step one and step two along with the bag labels. It starts with assembly. It says one on that page. Well, and then two for the screws. And then when you turn the page, it just says assembly, and it says one, two again. Well, that's because it's the second page, so they are like, okay, that, that's for the right, second Abby, page. But this says step two, so the normal person would expect to see step two match step two. Oh my gosh! Well, that's step four. But step two is the filament sensor, filament runout. So where's that thing? That thing, Abby. That thing. Filament runout sensor. Filament runout sensor. <laughs> Stop reading. Thank you. And the screws. <laughs> you're having trouble. Try you oh, your your thing yet? is off. Oh. It's off. Here, you want mine? No wonder my microphone was off. <laughs> She was hearing me through her microphone. I'm sorry about that. I tested it earlier. Maybe I didn't say something soon enough. It was off. And it turned off because there was no activity for a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm smart. <laughs> yeah, I know she's right, but I'm saying it just doesn't match up in the book. It doesn't say step one or step two, so you don't know what step you're on if you're oh. just flipping through and you lose where you're at. Well, I do. Well, not everybody is smart. as smart as you. And it also tells you right on the thing. Where does and it, it tell tells me in you the book what page. step I'm on? No, I'm talking about like the. I know, but where does it tell me what step I'm on? The pages are the steps. Like this is step. This whole it? page is step one. But where does it say that? Oh my gosh. That's right. It doesn't. Thank you. And also, if you are now lost, can, you could just look we at can this. Put this on. This. I don't think there's any real way that you put this on you guys probably I feel like see this because it's so far up here i mean i can like pick up the camera no. okay no you leave the camera right where it's at this is attached to the bracket with a little swivel mount for it to be freestanding and move around um it shows putting where the flaps stick out it looks like these face forward, according to this picture diagram. But here's a good way to figure that out, because in this picture it shows this part sticking in right there. So it can't be like that, because that would be backwards. All right. So the flaps will go to the back, like the open part, the rounded part up front, and the walls in the back. This will go up here. Again, I'm sorry you guys can't see this part. I've never really been set up to do lives real well yet. There's not really anything complicated. No, this part is real easy to write. If you grab the right wrench. He's asking if our bear if like once we finish it, if our bearings are crunchy as well. Which I don't know what that means, but you're like a full on expert. You hear that noise that mine's making? 
the SVO6 behind me. Oh. Sorry about that. Which I never took mine off and greased them. These screws do not fit in here. Yeah, your thing is low power. Well, just give me a... <laughs> okay. I don't know why it's been on the charger. You'll just have to hear Abby <laughs> through me. I'll just talk louder. It's been on the charger, so I don't know why. Maybe the case is dead. Probably. Yeah, case is dead. So, Abby. Yeah. This just plugs into a phone charger. Let me see this. It probably won't take long with this charger to be out. There we go. We'll just wait about 10 minutes and it should be fully charged. Are you sure? So, yeah, these screws are not going in here. This is step two. They seem to be M5. Going okay, so step, this says with two M5 by 10 screws. This says step two is M4 by 20s. See what I'm saying? It doesn't match up. That says it's step two, but that's not step two. It can't be. I bet you this is for the power supply. M5 step 20. This is M4 by 20, yes, M5 by 20. which is step three. Oh. You guys, I don't know if you guys realize this, but this says step two, but these screws are the screws for the power supply, which is, I'm assuming, step three. I don't know, because like I said, it's not labeled. Abby? Five by ten now, do you see how four. easily you get confused when you don't know? Well, they messed up. Well, I know. That's why I'm just letting them know. Yeah, I didn't mess up. <laughs> that's what I'm doing here. I'm letting them know. So these baggies were labeled wrong. This actually says step four on it. The size is correct on the bag, but the step is incorrect according to the manual, which is not a big deal. I mean, it's just a filament mount. Which means they're actually misprinted to begin with. See, Sobel, this is why you guys should send me a printer for free. Before you release it, I can check it out. You know, find stuff like this. Let you know about it. And then we'll pay you later. Abby will pay you later. See? I won't. We're all good. I don't have a job. I'm broke. There we go. Now it's going in there. And again, I don't tighten these up either until I get them both in there all the way anyway. Beta tester in the future? Absolutely. I'd love to be a beta tester. All right. Again, we are so sorry you can't see this. Yeah, just know that when you get yours, <clears throat> the sticker will say step four on it, but it's actually step two, but the size is correct, so at least the size is right. Uh, yeah, anybody could have got it if they would have ordered first. I'm not the only person that has it. And I know I didn't get any special privilege. I went to refresh the site about, I don't know, I think it was like seven or eight minutes. I can pull up my order and see what time it was. Here we go. I actually got it before the release time. I'm not sure if they made a mistake and didn't mean to open it up that early or what. Or maybe the time change or maybe somebody had to because they had to go to the bathroom. So they had to turn it on real quick. <laughs> I don't know. But when I refreshed it, while I was at work on my phone, it popped up and said it was available. So I sent them my money and it confirmed it. And then it shipped out later that evening, which is way better than the last time with the SVO6 because there was a lot of people waiting for a very long time. 
It seemed like a very long time. It really wasn't that long. We got it for 290 Yeah, yep. Yeah. So you should be getting yours here pretty soon, Evgeny. No, yours hasn't. Should have you looked at the website or checked your email? I think they only had like 30 units of the people of the 200 went out first. I don't think it was everybody that got in there early. I think uh, there was 500 and something that was it. There was actually more than a, what was supposed to get it at that price because they sold so fast. They didn't have time to change the price, I believe. So I believe there's only 30 people. And Sobel doesn't give privilege to admins, trust me, when it comes to buying printers. You don't get yours first. I didn't get my SVO6 until a month and a half or two months after the first people got theirs. It yeah, took someone, a while. Someone got this before we did. No, the other one. Oh, Not this, well, one. Also about this one. Oh, I didn't see anybody because I didn't get on Facebook. He um, because his are crunchy, you know? No, he was asking if this one is going to be the same as that one. Oh. Yeah, he wants to know if that's if it's going to make the same noise. Now, next is the power supply, which is actually step three. But remember, this bag says step two. But we already know that and figured it out. And now you will know, too, when you get yours. If you've ordered it. How does this thing go on there? This has to face the outside. That's probably the same as the other one. Airplane. Right. Like this. Oh, wait. I don't see any holes. How does... Yeah, how does that get on there? On this? Nope. Yeah, I guess it just goes... I'm a little confused. I don't see mounting holes for this to go on here like this. <laughs> Does it go over here? Oh, that's because that's for the SD card reader. <laughs> Duh. Here. That's the thing that mounts up. <laughs> Hold that for me, please. Oh, boy. As if I haven't put enough of these together already and I didn't remember that it actually goes over here and I have it backwards. Oh my gosh. If you've ever watched me assemble something, it's pretty painful. I usually have to do it like three times. Oh no, which, which size wrench is it? Does this one fit in there? I think it's a... Yep. Okay. All right. I don't claim to be the smartest person in the world. <laughs> oh, that's it. It's not. It's, oh, is it? Is that it? No. I can't see over there. Down a bit, down a bit, down a bit, down a bit. Is that what you said? Is that? Oh. There you go. See, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I brought Abby. Ooh, that feels really tight. It doesn't feel like it's going in straight. Oh, I can't see. Let's do the bottom one first, anyways. I, shouldn't, I don't think I should do the top one first. Here, turn that wrench for me. This person asked how many printers do we have? Uh, in the house, we have one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. We have three SVO sixes, the SVO two, the SVO five, and an Ender three V two, and a U print SE plus, which is an industrial ABS machine. That one was about $27,000, the U-print oh, was. But it also comes with the SCA wash. 
because it prints support material and ABS, and the SEA wash is to dissolve. You want the last cookie? I need the other screw. Oh, is it already yeah. in here? Still? There it is. The SEA wash is to dissolve the support. It's a prototyping machine. Yeah, these are a little tough to screw in, but they're going in straight. So. Which I'm all right with. Because I know it's going to be tight. The thing does not wiggle at all. Oh, it yeah. is on there. All right. And I'm assuming these will connect together down here. You can go ahead and plug up these two. Well, you should. I don't know why I'm talking. They can't hear me. Yeah, they can hear you. It's just not very loud. Well, you should. Uh, into the industrial printers. I would probably go with um, one of the cheaper ones, the bamboo or something the x1c it's probably the closest thing to being like it because the u print auto calibrates and all that stuff itself too it's, it's very it's nice pretty quick assembly. yeah it is now this is gonna go on here oh faux show that just pushes on snaps down locks in yeah that's done I really don't even need the manual for this. This is the same assembly, it looks like, as the SV06. You want the last cookie? The regular one. No, you can have it. Yay. Yeah, I'm thinking I really don't even need this book, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I haven't gotten one because, for one... It's still a lot of money to spend on a printer when all I really got to do is stick something like this. Unless you want multiple colors. I mean, then it was something you probably need to get. Which, I don't really print many things in colors. And if I do, I take the parts, I go into... Um, what is that program? Blender. I go into Blender... And I put in, or I'll split them into parts myself, and then uh, I'm dropping cookies on my printer, Abby. You can't be printing over cookies. <laughs> I'll put it into Blender myself and break it into dual printable files, and then glue it together. Where's the other screws? I don't know what step it's gonna say, so. I need the screws for the tool head. It should it should be those. There should be four in a bag right here. Oh, the screws. Well, that's only three. I guess maybe it is only three pieces. One, two, three. Yeah, it is only three. It's not four, it's three. I'm going to need your expertise here, Abby. I can't see. It goes in this there? this hole up here. And this is going to be the M4 oh, wrench. This is so hard. Let's see, does this fit? If it does, just stick it on the end of there and then put it in there while it's on the wrench. Yeah. There you go. Screw it in. It's still wobbling everywhere. This is so hard. All right, you hold this thing up here, and I'll get this. <laughs> this is so fun. Uh. I don't know why it's not going in. Uh. 
I need to come around there and just I'll take it off for a second. I'm going to come around here and see what's going on. Do you want me to take your spot? No. This must not be the screw. That doesn't fit in that hole. What? What does it fit? Are these? M3. Yeah, these don't fit in there. It must be. Oh, it is. It is these little ones. Yeah. I don't think these are even hex screws, are they? Yeah, they are. They're real tiny. It's been a while since I took mine apart, so I forgot. These are the tiny little hex wrench. The wires scare me. I'm scared of wires. The wires? Why? There's a lot. All these obnoxious colors. Yeah, if you put this printer on Clipper, it will run the same speeds. It's still on linear rails. That's not in there. But that's why we couldn't get it in. We had the wrong screws. <laughs> We were trying to put a watermelon through a hole the size of a pencil. <clears throat> this is one of the most views we've ever had. All right. It's not about who's currently watching Abby. It's who is going to help out when they see it later. Even. I know. Here, put it in here. I'm going to drop it. Oh, no. Well, then don't. Here, give it to me. Don't drop it. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Okay. No, just give it to no, me. I got it. Please give it to me. Well, you're going to make me drop it. I was just about to put it in. It's hard because you can't twist it with your fingers and your finger would be in the way. You've been able to place the bearings. Yeah, I never greased the bearings on my SVO6. I never replaced them. Uh, the only thing I did was I just kept putting grease on the rails. That's literally all I've done. I've um, not had any problems with it whatsoever other than the noise. But the noise doesn't bother me. But I put that synthetic grease that I posted in the group a long time ago, actually before this printer, before that printer even came out. Here's the car. All right, so that's in. I know this is probably not the next step, but okay, I know this clips in up here. We're going to do it anyways. And I would suggest putting your hand on the bottom whenever you press it in. Don't just push down on it. Because it might bend the bars, and we don't want that. Yeah, or make your gantry not level because you're pushing on this side and not this side. Looks like the printer does have the tensioner knobs, just like the SVO6. One on the front, one on the side for X, Y, and Z. I got the power supply plugged in back here. The bed is already plugged into the box. This is the X. Next step which is, is up here, actually. Next step y, is, is y is forward to back. X is left to right. So that's plugged in. I'm assuming the... Y is probably already plugged in because, nope, it's right here. What is this? Ooh, fancy. What is this? Looky. It doesn't reach there. Looky, looky. Oh, there it is, this plug. There's another little black plug back here that goes. I'm just going to peel it off and be so satisfied with this. Oh, 
Well, make sure you get better light than I do so you can see what you're doing. Where is my... No, not that flashlight. There we go. Heavy duty. Clear is clear. Probably don't want to put that on the end area. Yeah, we'll do that here in a minute. Um, I need the wire for this. What? That? Well, maybe we should do the wiring last. I can tell you the bearings sound like they're going to be the same. Here it is. The bearings sound the exact same to me. There we go. I don't give you much room with that one. All right. So step one, step four, step twelve, step sixteen, fifty-four, and two is done. Fifty-four. <laughs> so now we're gonna do the screen. So I think that's the last thing left. We got this one plugged in, this one, this, this, this. And what is this? Mounter. Oh. Mounter. See, how does this go on there? You just. Oh. Where's the book? Let me see that book. It says to put the screen or the mount on first with those three screws we were trying to stick into the tool head. So Which here. Where did you put them? Oh, right there. So here, Abby, we'll have you put this on there. I'm trying to see which way it goes. I guess this would be facing downwards. So it'll go like this. Okay. I get, we want it. You can do it at two different angles. You can do it so like that it. or like that. But we want it want as it. leaned back as much as possible. So... I think it. Oh, my eyes. Like this. I need to get back a bit. Like this. Back. What is there extra special holes for it? No, they're not all the way in the front. They're back farther. Oh, I see. I guess there is not two different ways to mount this one. Maybe that was my SVO two that was like that. No, I think the SVO six you can switch it up too. But oh well, this is the orientation I wanted at anyways. Yeah, Trevor, it sounds like the bearings are going to be the same. I did notice on this plate, there's screws on the top of the plate in the back. I'm assuming that's to guide the PEI plate in there. So, yeah, that's what it's for. Oh, wow. So, the SVO6 Plus has these little notches in the bed. As you can see so when you take the bed off and you want to put it back on you just slide it back into those two notches and drop it and boom it's perfectly square that I love I love that absolutely and this is a 310 by 320 I know the website says 300 by 300 but this plate says it's a 310 by 320 This one first. Yeah, Trevor, that would be awesome if the SVO6 had that. What you need, Abby? Can I just put it in with the. This thing is probably charged up now. Okay. 
Yeah, the hex wrench? Yeah, the hex wrench. Here, here's your microphone. Hey guys. Which size one was it? Do you remember? M4, I think, that one? Right. It's a little loose um, when it to pull it in now, but yeah. And they did give us the uh, ballpoint wrenches again, which are the best. I love those. It has a little ball on the end of it. Just so you can get at their screws at different angles. Looks like we got uh, three wrenches for nozzles. In here, hmm. Okay, there it is. I was looking for the spare nozzle. I see it over there. I'm just gonna check this nozzle. It doesn't feel loose. All right, the mount is on. The mount is on. Yep. There should be a wire. Yep, there it is. Pull that out. You need to lift it a little. Pull it out this way. Underneath. I am. Okay. And then it'll plug this? into this. Yep. Well, it has to mount first because. No, we're going to put it in there first. But then you're going to have to bring it around. Yep. That's upside down. Maybe this goes like this and it comes in from the back? Probably. Wow, and there's not enough room. Yeah, I can't go down. There we go. All right, that one's a little difficult. The screen plug. Um, I'm used to this little tab that you pull this off with being on the bottom. So I guess you make sure the graphics and stuff are on the right hand side of the screen. <laughs> no, leave it on there. And I think that's it. I think that's all together. There's usually a rubber band around these zip ties. I guess they didn't put one on these. But that's all right. We'll put them right back here in the bag. I'm glad they still come with zip ties because I do end up using them. Maybe not so much on this machine, but I'll use it on my other ones when I replace nozzles and stuff like that or PTFE tubes. Where's the M5 that you were using that goes with this set? I just put it in there. No, the one you just used was the M4, wasn't it? Put it in there. No one here. I'm going to actually try to keep this wrench set together. I got the other ones all mixed up. I really like this. It's unplug it. That's great. I don't think we're going to need anything else in here except our SD card. Where is the SD card? Do you have it over there? Right there? Mm -hmm. now, let me put this back in here. Yeah, go ahead and put that in there. Shovel. Don't use it for a shovel. It's just a joke. Yeah. That's a number two uh, oil paint spatula is what I've been told but I like it for scraping stuff off the bed especially if you sharpen this with a stone and you can get it really sharp and you can get up underneath there with it, it works great 
All right. So this. I'm assuming there's probably already a Benchy on here. Can we need to get the power cord? And yep, now I gotta figure out a way to plug this thing in. I didn't think about that. Uh oh, so you're gonna be sitting here for a bit. No, you won't. There's a plug right here. Oh. Well, it's pretty short. <laughs> well, um. That's the wrong side. That's where I'm supposed to go. In the. Where is. Where's those orange extension cords? We should have another one somewhere. Right there. Go to, no, that it's, one's plugged into my computer. Can you go? There's an orange one right there, though. Another one we have. It's plugged into my computer. Um, go check outside in front of the house. I think there might be one on the ground. Either that or in the garage. I guess first we'll see if this actually can reach or not. And if you need to, you can just scoot the thing on the side a little bit. Well, hold on. There's nothing important plugged into this, so I can probably just reach it from here. <clears throat> I just unplugged the printer and the um, oh. filament dryer. Okay. Here we go. And three. Drum roll, pre please. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on and it's not on <laughs> it's great <laughs> hold on we didn't plug in something <laughs> walton's family christmas all over oh you know what we did what i'll bet you money this gets everybody i swear they don't change this to 115 for you. All right, drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, it's because I turned the power strip off. Hold oh, on. my God. There we go. Three, two, one. Yep. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. How's it look? It looks awesome. There was, there's like a little ash. <gasps> Ooh. Whoa. You like that? I love it. Look at it. It's colorful, isn't it? No. It does look... Yes, it is. I it can looks, see it, it looks, from here. It looks like it's just basically blue. But it looks very... A lot of different blues. We got this white filament here. I know the last time we got filament from them. Benji. I think it's the same kind, actually. The white that I got from them one time with my SVO2 was real gooey and stuff, and it printed really nice, almost like. Dad, you gotta see this. Almost like it was. Uh, vapor ABS. I forget what they call it. I'm just trying to think of what it was called. And they put acetone vapors on ABS. Vapor smoke. Yeah, they can see. It looks really cool. It looks cooler in person. All right. Just going to stick this into the top a little bit. And then... Twist And remember, left. guys, this, this filament mount has bearings in it. That is just so amazing. I am in love with that idea. Turn it left. Huh? Turn it left. Turn what left? No, we don't want to do anything yet. You don't ever do that until it's heated up. That way, filament can melt through it. But we gotta get this chair out of the way so I can get through here. There ain't much space in between this table and the couch. Oh wow, this thing does look nice. All right. It's got your temperature gauges on here for your nozzle in the bed. Your auto leveling. It's going to auto home as soon as you push that button. Yeah, it has a lot of bearings. 
Yep, it's got loud bearings. <laughs> to me, that's not a really big deal. I mean, oh, oh, what is happening? Mine got quieter last time. It's crooked. It's not crooked. Yes, it is. It's auto leveling it, Abby. Let it go. It's doing its thing. It's annoying. It hasn't even done anything yet. It's annoying me. Technically. It just it's been shipped halfway across the world. I'm not sure what you expect. And that's why we have this tool right here. This is what I tell a lot of people to do with their SV06. I don't yeah. think that's auto leveling. It's it's binding because it's so crooked. There we go. Does that look a lot more straight? No, this one's still farther down. Hold on a minute. So obviously make sure that's a lot straighter before you go and move it. Yeah, I'm going to leave the rails. If I can find the Lube. grease, I'm not sure where I put it exactly. Green. Look in that top tray over there under the SVL5. Careful with this chair. You're going to hit the table with it. I need to move this down first. There's a button up here so you can put it in night or day mode. That's pretty cool. Um, that's the refuel screen. That's for changing filament. Nope. I mean, it's already got little grease on the rails anyway it'll be all right for now until i find it kitty <laughs> oh you know what? what i know what we did we didn't plug in this motor over here or i didn't one of us didn't we have a stepper motor that's not moving that's why one side moved and the other one wasn't. It's a little meow meow. Now we're good. Aha. Not crooked anymore. It is still kind of loud. It is very loud. <laughs> but as I stated before, that doesn't bother me. The first hour was all right. <laughs> the first hour. Has it been an hour? Yeah. But it only took an hour because we were like... Yeah, we are explaining stuff. What's happening? I can already see how this could be a problem. It's letting out extra. Somebody's made a clip... I think maybe something to hold it up here will be better. But this just dangles in between the bed and the frame. Well, so we can use a zip tie. We'll have to figure out something here. Zip tie. Yeah, we could use a zip tie right there, couldn't we? Hold on. Do it like the zombies do not stop. Do it. There we go. I, I, I thought you were like talking about like zipping it on the side. Uh, that might be better. Because that'll just slide down though. I don't want to do it real hard. I don't want it to be real tight. So Maybe I need to get another one. I thought these were really long. Apparently, they're not long enough. Me, 
might need brains, but he's got no bones. The plus is always looking good. All right. That'll hold that up for now. I guess that looks like a good idea. I don't know. This is quiet. The bearings on this thing is quiet. So here's the filament runout sensor. It's got little arrows on it. Tells you which way to run it through. So you can just push it through there. <gasps> Michael. Dad, it's Michael. Hello, Michael. That's Michael Hill. It's that's another a, Michael. I think, I think that's the guy that did the firmware for the SV06. It's a, a lot of people have appreciated Michael. Very, very much. I push the auto leveling button. It's now heating up. While it's heating up, this is where I tell you guys to check the blue piece down to the stepper motor. It's 53. And that one is 53 point whatever. It's close enough. Not even a millimeter off, so where's my phone? I'm not gonna test the z-axis leveling. I don't know if this one has a different separate driver or if it's programmed to be able to do independent. <laughs> I don't know. I'll figure that out later. I'm trying to get to printing to see how well the print's gonna come out. I'll let you guys do all that dirty work and educate everybody on the boards and all that, which I'm sure sure it's probably the same board. Is what's in the SVO6, which Sovo has made a pretty good board for their first board. I think it is immaculate. There's no lag or anything on the screen. Trevor said, Now that it's all together, I want it's coming to join me live. <laughs> a lot of people think the assembling's boring, but it helps people. Yeah, especially when I do it, it might mess you up. I always tend to do something a little wonky. Oh, look. What do we have here? Oh, come on. Something else not plugged in. So, guys, whenever you assemble it, don't forget like I did. What's that for? To grab the wire for the filament sensor and plug <laughs> in the dang filament sensor. But I'm going to have to turn this off because you should never plug in or unplug anything electronic <laughs> before or while it's powered oh my god you gotta be <laughs> like kidding. i said i don't use filament sensors so i didn't think about that let me tell you what let's run it through this thing though all right now everything is plugged in maybe if i'd have read the manual Do... yeah yes <laughs> um, but i don't know what step it would have been probably the last step <laughs> it was here let's step. look All right, now let's try this leveling again. It is, is the last bed over here. Move that. Oh. You don't need anything behind the bed because the bed is going to sling back and forth. Can we have it right there then? Yes. Should we bring one of the Alice in Wonderland things? Oh, uh, they've seen them all. I've posted them all on there. I'm still working on Cheshire Cat. Cheshire Cat? Like Worcestershire? But you can check out this little cool, while well, this is heating up and getting ready to auto level, check out this cool little puzzle box that I made called The Heist. You guys have probably seen this on printables. It's uh, pretty neat. I printed it in PETG. The gold is the only thing PLA. Everything else is PETG. Even the clear. Actually, this blue part is PLA with PETG on top of it. That's PETG, and the gold is PLA. I just layered them. Printed this on the SV06. Worked out really nice. Dead. Yeah, you can have a drink of it. No, I haven't. Right. He's talking about I the... used uh, two zip ties. I just, because I didn't have one long enough, so I just uh, zip tied them together to make it a little longer. 
and I just have it up there hanging. I'll probably leave it like that forever, to be honest with you, because that works. I don't care how pretty it looks as long as it works. But look at this floating filament sensor, huh? They Some can't see it. Do justice on this one. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> Point to it, Abby. Floating filament sensor right there. But I just use zip ties to put it on there. And it works. Works beautifully. And as this comes up, I'm hoping that this would fall out of the back as it came up, which I'm sure it would. It would push it away this way as this came up. So, All right. It's waiting for the bed to heat up. Um, a lot of people say they think that their bed is not straight um, or whatever. You do have to heat the printer up to get an accurate reading. It's not going to give you a fully accurate reading. I think Rory put in a good explanation of why that exactly is in the group the other day. So if you guys look through his past posts, it explains it very well on why it needs to heat up the nozzle and bed to get an accurate reading. Dad, it's moving. Yeah, it's just auto leveling. It's going to go around and do so many points. It looks like this is using a UVL because it didn't start at the front. If they go like this song, it goes like this. Did it already go up here? No. Did it start like right here? Hmm. It's got a little guy on the screen here that's showing it's an astronaut. What row is on, yeah, it's a Sobel astronaut. And it shows him on row two, which is right here. And we can all see that is not the case, so I'm a little curious as to why that is. Maybe because I didn't auto home it first. Maybe I should have auto homed it. We'll see what it does. I'm probably gonna turn it off. Yep, I knew that was coming. All right. So auto home it first. That terrified me. Uh, it works off resistance in the first place. It's not gonna hurt it because it doesn't have switches. So that's probably why that happened. So we gotta start this all over. See, even I make mistakes. Jesus. I haven't tore anything up yet. Thank goodness. Yeah, we probably didn't auto home it correctly. You just gotta auto home it first yeah. before you turn or auto home it before you auto level it. And now you see why it thinks that's the center of the bed right now and it's not. So we're going to go to auto leveling. Nope. And I can't cancel. We gotta turn it off. It automatically wants to level the bed when you go to auto leveling. So it must have to go to a different setting. Probably the advanced setting to auto home at first. Probably some technical difficulties. The screen is very nice. Advanced settings. Nope. That's not it. Let's go back. Hmm. Oh, here we go. It's this little arrows down here, so now we'll auto home at first. Which is step one of this process, I should have known. Because it has to find out. That doesn't look good, does it? This cable is getting in between. Still thinks that's the center. Yeah, like I wonder if it was because of that. Let's try this again. Oh no. There we go. That wire was stopping it, so this right here is getting caught in between the bed and the frame, and it made it stop early due to the resistance limit, you know, the switch list limits, limits, whatever you call it. This was stopping it because it was down into here. So make sure that this is pulled out. I think somebody has a print to hold one of these or something. But now it knows where the center of the bed is. I still that don't was think the issue that's the we were center. Having. So now we go back to the middle selection. So now we can go to leveling. 
and it's auto homing again. Yep, that's what was. So it does auto home before leveling. It was just that wire getting caught in there that was stopping it. So we have to figure out a way to keep that from happening too. Which it looks like if you manually move it, it'll probably just stay out of the way anyways. Go to auto level. See, I was talking earlier and I did realize it did try to auto home. It just didn't auto home correctly. The screen is very nice. I'm curious to see if the SVO2 screen is the same one. I have a hunch that it is. It's the same size, that's for sure. I wonder if I can uh, possibly put the touch screen from the SVO2 on the SVO6 if it uses the one on here. <laughs> probably just enable it and it'll probably work. No offense taken. What? <laughs> yeah, Matt, that's why I do it. And I don't ever, I don't, I don't think I've ever done everything perfect the first time around. There's always something that I mess up. But I know that. I mean, I've, I've told May before in private, hey, I think I broke my printer. This is what I did. And this is what I did to fix it. <laughs> so if anybody else does it, let them know. You want to do the poll? So a question we've had in the past is, what's this plug here on the side for? I don't know. <laughs> you want to do the poll? Does it, are you going to let you activate it? There you go. There we go. I'll put up a poll. If it's... Abby put up a poll. I don't know if it's popping up or not. I don't see it. Oh, well. There it is. Where? It's on the screen over there. You don't see it on the second screen? Oh. Just put it already has. Yeah. You guys don't have to answer. It's just something I figure I would gather a little statistics of. If you look, it looks like, which I don't know if it makes a difference or not. This coupler over here is lower than that coupler over there. That my so I'm wondering answers. if I'm going to have Z bind or uh, uh, not Z binding, but um, Z layer lines because maybe these these rods might be touching. Michael has the answer to that plug on the side. Oh, okay. I know. So I good. All right. Ow. Now we I have my hands. the bed Ow. level. It's on the screen. Um, looks like you can change your Z uh, offset, probe offset, if you want it to change by 0 0.05 millimeters or 0 0.01. So there's two different settings on that one. So you can get it baby stepped or if you need to do it quickly. And then your save is right here underneath the numbers. That's that's great that they've done that. I thought today was Thursday. So now I'm going to heat up the nozzle. I'm, I'm assuming I just click it, which that is exactly what you do. Hi, Jimmy. Click nozzle temp, preheat to 1... 85 is what I'm gonna do because this is a high flow nozzle. Okay. I don't know how low of a temperature you need to use on these yet. Hit enter and it is now heating up the nozzle to 185. When that reaches up there, I will then well, let's see if the filament sensor is turned on in advanced settings here. It's got this message. I don't know if this message is going to pop up every time or if you can turn it off, but. I hope you can turn it off because I don't want to see that every time. Uh, 
Um, oh, that's something I do need to do first. PID tuning. Someone just gave us every single reaction. <laughs> Even the mad. <laughs> Guess that's a little different than what I'm used to seeing, so I'll look that up later. I don't know how to check to make sure. Jimmy said hi. I don't see where to do the filament runout sensor to make sure it's on. Dad, you should probably look at the chat. <clears throat> Yes, I have. I have my own SVO5. Six. Six. It's not five. I'm sorry. Six. I have my own SVO6. I'm thinking this here maybe is for the filament runout sensor, this little icon which is crossed out. But it's not on. I don't know. I could probably look in the manual. I don't really care. I don't like to use filament runout sensors to begin with. So I'm just going to see, make sure it's heated up. It so is Dad, at 185. Dad, so you know I accidentally skipped school because I slept in? You accidentally skipped school? I did! Okay, I slept in. I, s <laughs> I just thought of a picture of Carson. It's my foster dog. He's gone now, but... I don't see where to... The PID can be adjusted, but you... I mean, I was looking for a temperature setting to just tell it to go by. I don't see that on here. So I'm not going to mess with the PID yet. I don't even know what PID stands for. I usually just set it to a certain temperature and tell it to go with whatever default settings it has. It looks like it wants you to manually fine-tune P, I, and D in this instead of just telling I, it what temperature to stay at. I swear it was an accident. Okay, I forgot to set my alarm. I swear. There's the printer info. That's all fine. I can't seem to find out where to disable the steppers. I woke up at like 10-something I was like, oh, crap. And so I was in my room, scared hmm. for my life. I don't see where to disable the steppers to turn the wheel to get the filament to go through. Abby, hand me that card down there. The salt? Please. Yeah. We gonna print the mini boat? No, I I swear, I I'm not I'm not that type of kid that would just skip school. I swear. Yeah, I don't see. Hand me a piece of printer paper, please, Abby. Where's printer paper? You mean just paper? Here's paper. I don't see a way to... Disable the steppers to feed the filament through. I'm stepping it down by 
0.05. Okay, I feel it barely well, catching, that so I'm going to switch to 0.01. Now, see, if you push the paper with two fingers and it starts to bend, that means it's down too far. It's still bent. There, it's relinquished. And there, it kind of bends a tad before I push on it, and then it goes through. So I'm going to, it's either right there is going to be perfect, or maybe 0.01 .01 up. And then I'm going to hit save. Yeah, what happened to you, Matt, with work happened to me, basically, except I didn't set my alarm. <laughs> and, and just because my Z school. offset says negative 1.44, do not set your Z offset to negative 1.44 and expect no damage to happen. Everybody's offset is going to be different. It's not going to be the same. Now that that's set up, I'm going to let it file. So there's a lighthouse and a benchy. I'm gonna I'm gonna print the benchy because I don't know how long or how big the lighthouse is. So we're gonna go with the benchy that's already preloaded on here. It looks like the I don't know how many files will fit on here, but it looks like maybe one, two, three, four, five, and then four pages. So twenty files, I'm assuming. Benchy. Start. This is a benchy. Benchy. Here's an adjustment while it's printing in the top right of your screen. You hit the, let's see, what is it? Two little arrows, one facing left and one facing right. You can adjust your fan speed, print speed. You can do a filament change by just tapping filament change. Man, I want this SQL. You can um, adjust your Z offset on the fly, hop add nozzle. All that is in that screen. That's not a button down there. So you can also just touch the nozzle on this screen or the bed or the Z offset. And it'll also adjust it that way. The filament isn't going out. I know. It's just now feeding in there. I couldn't. There we go. Yeah, let me stop it. Well, now it's going to be off. I'm going to stop it and restart it real quick. Because I I couldn't find where to disable the steppers to prime the nozzle. That's the word I was trying to think of. Dang. Here, hold that stuff. <laughs> All right, back to the Benchy. Highlight, print. Here we go. I don't know what the speed is already preset to either. My face, whenever I said dang, I saw it. That was goofy. What's happening? Why isn't it? Hello? What she doesn't know, though, is she's accidentally grounded. It was an accident. I didn't mean to ground you. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Oh. All right. And here it goes. I wish it told the actual speed. I like to feel the line right here to see if it's rounded, if it's flat. Which, that line feels pretty good. There might be a little bit of black on the bottom, but we're just going to leave it like that. It looks to be printing faster than 60, which is what I normally print everything on. I probably should have just loaded up my own. That way I could have set the speed to 150 and seen this sucker fly. Would you guys rather me do that? Load one up. Set it to 150. Abby, click over there where it says 4 and see what those messages on the bottom right. Yep, 
All right, just minus it down. Minus it down. It looks to be going pretty fast. He said, sure, it's your show. <laughs> I would have to stop this print and pull that card out and put it in a computer to see if they got their own um, Kira on there again with the SVO6 Plus profile. Yeah, I don't have that STL, Michael. Uh, if you want to send me one, I mean, I can try that. I don't care to burn up this filament I got. I don't know, probably 60 kilos of filament over there that I could use. How long is this print going to take? I don't know. It doesn't tell me. Well, it says two hours and 15 minutes. Nah. It ain't going to take that long. My own face is gone, right? That's how it's supposed to look like. We'll turn the print speed up to 125 and see what happens. I heard it kick in an extra gear. Let's see what. Let's see if the manual says anything about installing Cura printing main board printing. Let's see. Select the SVO6 plus. Yes, they do have a file on there with their own profile. They do. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this one. That way, I, I can set the speed to 150 myself, and that way we can see how fast it gets this done. Go. They're just they're in the cube underneath the TV. Remember that cube you was looking for? Yeah. They're what? in that cabinet right in front of you. This cabinet. Yep. Oh. But if you're going to be over there, you need to turn your microphone off. I'm going to come back over there. Let's see here. I'm going to have to install another Cura. And I'm not joking when I say I use a different slicer for every single one of my printers. It's because I found what works best for each printer. And then that's what I use. Under software. I wonder if you're going to have to copy the profile over or not. That's changing filaments. Looks like the profile will already be saved in there. Duh, look at Hanzo. Having the time He's spinning Hondo around in a chair. He's gonna be dizzy. He's just hanging his head off the side. All right, Abby, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> He's tumbling. He's tumbling. He got too dizzy. Oh, that's funny. All right, I'm installing that Cura. It says once you install it, you just go straight to the SVO6 profile and add it. Finish, run it. 
I don't know why, but the messages won't pop up on that screen. It'll always pop up on that screen now. Why did it stop printing? What'd you do? Uh, that test is a little bit huge, Michael. I'd rather just have one that's just squares and lines. Although I guess that's what it needs for a big bed, doesn't it? Yeah, that's that's why it's for a three hundred. Let's see. We play Pokemon. I wonder why there's two. Oh, one's an STL, one's an NL. All right, let me add the Hunter STL six plus. Add. It's in there. Yeah, that looks to be correct. Let's see what speed do we want to go with here. One twenty speed is at one fifty. Print speed's at one fifty by default. Two hundred. All right. That is by default. So that's what we're gonna do. You have to go on the Facebook website to see all the messages that they put because it won't show up on that screen anymore. I don't need, yeah, I just go right here. There we go. That's how I got this Violet one. Need a print. All right. We're lagging. Fire it up, Abby. Select the file. It's going to be not Benchy, not Lighthouse. Layers. Yeah, that one. There we so go. says it's going to take. Should, it says 28 minutes. Oh, let's get this starter line off of here. There we go. Now, I haven't done any PID tuning because this one actually wants you to tune P, I, and D separately instead of auto. Pokemon. And Or maybe there is a way to auto. I don't know. I haven't went through it like that yet. That's all stuff that I'll figure out later. Um, the PEI plate says 310 by 320, Matt Benson. I don't know if you was here earlier, but there's notches in the back of it. So when you put the plate on here, it just slides into those notches and the PEI sheet is square every time, which I love. That's a nice little upgrade. And technically, you could do that with your SV06 or any printer, I guess. If you wanted to drill a little hole, put an M3 screw in there, and notch out your PEI plate. Hmm. Oh, what's the heat at, Abby? What's the nozzle say? 143. No, it's 148. And I actually have... 59. 64. 69. A thermal so cover I could put on the bottom 80, of this bed that would make it heat up faster, and it covers the whole bed, as you can see. 86. Perfect size. 85. I got this for a dollar... A dollar twenty-eight, I think it was. Two twenty-eight with shipping. AliExpress. It says two minutes. 
Maybe it is two minutes at 150. Is it the bottom one or the top one? The top one up in the circle. Well, there's two times in the top. In the circle. Off it goes. At 150. Oh, it says four hours and 43 minutes. Well, that's not right. I don't like the way that this bed cord drags. I'll have to figure out something there. It needs to be able to stop right no, here. It says one hour and 16 minutes. Sir. And then go up there. It'll keep going down. Oh, why did I just waste that? And this is all default settings in Kira. And whenever it prints something flat like this, I like to put my finger on it to see if it's smooth or if it's rough, because that tells me exactly how high my nozzle is. And judging, let's see, it may need to have, since it's printing so fast, the heat turned up just a tad. So I'm going to go here to the heat where it's at 185 by default, temperature, and I'm going to put it on 191. Enter. Just because it looks like the lines aren't connecting. I don't know if that's because of a setting that I have an overlap setting or if it's just not hot enough. But it is kind of smooth. Oh, oh. It's stringing now. Yeah, a little bit of stringing, but it might be because I turned the heat up. Maybe it needs Probably. to go right down. Yeah, it's stringing a lot. All right, turn it back down to 185 on the nozzle. I might need to be Z hopping whenever it's moving around, too. That could be why it's stringing in between. But we're getting ready to see if the stringing stops or not. I think it has. Well, it hasn't stopped yet. Boy, this thing sure is flying, though. <laughs> it is laying the plastic. It is. If it's I'm still be streaming honest. a little bit. I think I needed a Z-hop whenever it's uh, doing the movement. Not a big deal on this. If I'm going to be honest, it's probably louder than the SV06. Well, it's moving almost three times faster yeah, than what I use it, mine, too. But it is going way faster. Yeah, the little bit of stringing in between is not a big deal, especially for this print. That could probably be adjusted by retraction or something. There's a few different things that you can do. It doesn't look like you're streaming anymore, though. It may have just needed to cool down from where it was. It definitely has combing mode on. Um, the default retraction. Hmm. I must have a setting where it automatically closes. Uh, the Cura version that they have for Sobel now is 1.5.6, whereas the one for the SV06 was 1.5.4. And yes, I will be using a separate one for both because that's just the way I like it. Whatever works best is what I keep. 
Um, default retraction. Let's see. And by the way, this setup of Cura is way better. It's not. Whenever you go into a category, there's it doesn't drop down a menu. So all of your categories are on the left. And when you select one, it shows what's in that category on the right. So it doesn't tear down whenever you select it, which is great. So you don't have to scroll through a big mess. It's about like how um, Prusa is, actually. Retraction speed, it's the same as the SV06, 30 and 25. <clears throat> and then, and actually this bed, the bearings are not loud. Like the SV06 is. Oh, my bad. It's not loud at all. I can't hear the bearings moving at all. I think they've greased them. Now I hear that, crunching. Not from this, you don't. No, you don't. You hear this probably scraping. No, I hear crunching. That's braided cord. No, I mean, there's no crunching. Okay. You might be hearing the SVO6 behind me. Because it is. It's no, crunching it's right now. But this, can, this is it. It's right. It's literally at the knob. No. Okay. I don't know what you're hearing, but it's you're mistaking it. For what I'm talking about. Why you're crunching? Mm -mm. Okay. And then... I'm surprised. I think they greased them this time on the inside. It's surprisingly quiet. I am very surprised at how quiet it is. I'd like to feel this square up here if I can. Can you stop, please? I don't care. I don't hear it. Exactly. Exactly, phone farmer. <laughs> it looks a little darker on one half of that square. It's not. And those little strings that were in the boxes are just getting printed over. Eleven minutes. I don't think I've ever printed on any printer this fast. At right, one fifty, I think the highest I've ever been was. Let's see, I did 70 on the SV05 all the time. The highest I went on the SV06 was 80. I never tried it any higher than that. I'm sure it could with Clipper or something. I've heard, I've heard a lot of people going to like 120. I had a spider hot end on my S or my um, Ender 3 V2, but it eventually just crapped out on me. So I bought a replacement of the original hot end that came with it and put it on there and, and now it prints absolutely perfect which is the first time I've ever gotten it so perfect there is no stringing it's completely smooth everything finally after having it for about a year which is the reason I went with Sobos because I didn't have any of those issues but now that one works really great
and it's only got one Z axis screw. I went through three hot ends on there before I got one to work perfectly. I think this filament's kind of cheap. Or maybe it's just because it's a high flow nozzle and going fast. I don't know. I feel like the seams, you can feel them a tiny bit. I probably could adjust the Z offset better. On this one, you can see it. Well, you can see it on all of them if you look in the light. Like around that, it looks like a stitching going mm -hmm. around it. I mean, they're all smooth. Now, the crunching you guys are hearing is this wire rubbing up against the back whenever the bed moves. I still hear crunching. I don't know what it is. It's your brain. No, it even picked up on the frying like an thing. Egg. It even picked up on the video on the phone. My keyboard. I thought it was only going to do one layer. Apparently do. Wire fire hazard. Where? Comments. What's a wire fire hazard? The wire that's dragging against it. Oh. No, this is nylon. That's not going to... I'm not going to rub off. Maybe after like a few hundred or maybe even thousand hours, something might happen to it. But yeah, there's definitely something that needs to happen with it, though. I just haven't figured out what needs to happen with it. I don't know if something should hang from up here to hold it, with like a rubber band or something, maybe. Because if something hung down right here, like a rubber band, and held it up right there, I think it would be perfectly fine. Maybe a clip that goes around this and comes down that you can put a rubber band on. That goes around this also. I'm gonna go by. I'm gonna. Uh, brrr, I'm gonna go, guys. Well, thanks for helping me out, Abby. You're welcome. It's a masterpiece. Bye. Now the wires are held in. Two. Tight. I don't think it would pull on the bed. Bye, good night. I'll see you in the morning when you wake up. <laughs> Should
should be about done. I know what crunching guys, what crunching sound you guys were talking about before. This this printer does not have it. It is not doing it. So from right here, it does sound like it, but it's that printer over there, SV06. I see why she thought she heard it. It's echoing through the bottom of it from back there. Well, I think this is going to answer your question, Matt. Looks like there might be... I, don't, I can't tell if that's... Well, I guess they all have that. There's a setting somewhere where the lines are not quite touching each other completely in some of these spots. Maybe an overlap setting or something. I need to figure out what's causing a little tiny bit of silky hair stringing in between here. Whenever it's moving around, I'm not sure what exactly causes that because I've never seen that before. It's usually maybe temperature is too high, you think? Even at 185? Just these little strings you can't hardly see. Yeah, the second layer is very, very smooth, and the lines are touching, so. I just need to figure out that first layer, I guess. It says this is only 68% done. I didn't expect it to go past the first layer, to be honest. But it's nice that it prints so fast with it uh, being such a big bed, because I know some of the reviews for, like, the Ender... What is it? One of those enders had a really huge bed. The CS6 maybe or the Ender 6? I think it was. That has the 300 bed. And they said it took forever to print stuff because of how far it had to sling the bed. But I don't think it printed this fast. It's definitely a big item to be slinging back and forth. That's that's one downfall, I guess, with uh, the bed slingers is when you get up to this size, you got to have a pretty sturdy surface to put it on. 
or the shaking is going to give you a bunch of layer lines and stuff like that. It's got to be sturdy. A lot of times you'll see them with that rod that goes from the top down to the corners to help keep it stabilized so it doesn't shake. And I'm looking, it looks like this corner right here might be a half a millimeter taller in difference. All the rest of them look smooth and perfect. But for me, I'm the kind of person, if, if it's off by a little bit, most likely I'm not going to care what the bottom of something looks like. As long as the top layers all come out smooth, which is usually what happens whenever you have that type of situation where it might be a tiny bit rough on the top. When it gets through that first layer, I seen somebody post in the group the other day talking about it. And they were having problems. Well, not really problems, but they had noticed that one part of the bed was printing a little thinner on the first layer than the ones on the top of the bed wondering if it was going to affect her print and generally most of the time it does not affect the print to begin with i guess it just depends on how picky you are of the whole process on whether or not it matters to you For a bed to this size to be even that close to being perfectly flat all the way around, I think is pretty good anyway. And that layer going on is covering it up and you can't even tell. And in the end, I'll take a picture of it and put it in the group so you guys can see it up close. Yeah, Michael, I thought that's probably what I'm about to do after it finishes this square is I'm just going to abort the print because, I mean, you get, you can get the point. It's done two layers. I think on all squares except the one it's on now, that one, and this one. But everything is nice and smooth. Yeah. Let me get my phone so I can get a picture of it. You can see where it stopped on this layer, though. A little bit of stringing during the travel movements. Everything is stuck to the bed very well. Nothing's coming off. I'd say it looks pretty flat.
looks like it will be good enough to print anything the size of a bed. Trying to get these little strings off so they're not in the picture as much. You can see them really good in the camera, but hardly at all in real life. And I'll post that up for you guys to see. All right, let me peel this off, and I want to see the quality of a benchy. I know you guys probably don't want to hang around to see that, but I'll get it recorded anyway. The video will be out there. You guys can fast forward to it if you'd like. You can hang out and watch it if you'd like. I'm going to put it on 150 speed. And see how the quality of it comes out as soon as i can find my little there it is way over here I'm going to load up my own benchy on here. That way I know exactly what the perimeters are. Okay. I do love the way this cure is set up. I may try to move my SDF6 over to this one. It's got a profile in there. I'll just Maybe I can just port mine over. Because the way this menu is set up to choose the categories is just amazing. It's awesome. Less clutter. You can see everything right there in front of you. I'm in love with it. There's my 3D Benchy. Put it in there. I don't want to do too much info. Let's... Uh, Probably like, I don't know, 5%. At 0.2 layer height, yeah, that's fine. I wonder how it would do with my fast profile. I think. We'll just try this first, I guess. Speed is still 150. I wonder if you know how much stringing will happen without changing any of that. Cooling. So the shell wall thickness is only set to 0.8 by default. Usually I like to have that at about 1.2, but we'll just leave it that way. 
I'm going to do the infill pattern gyro idea, just like that. Make sure the support is off. Yep, yep, yep. Slice. We'll name it something else here. Name it 3D Benchy 2. That's the original. And in there. G2. Heating back up. Oh, it does the bed first before nozzle. I don't really care for that kind of thing. I like for it to do both at the same time. The purge line at the beginning always gets that little string or whatever off of there anyway, and I don't like to wait. I usually just go in manually and turn the nozzle temperature up while it's preheating the bed. All right, it's starting. I think I actually may need to Take that Z offset down 0 0.02. That may have been why I was getting those little holes earlier. Because I noticed earlier when I started the 3D Benchy, the lettering wasn't coming out real clear. It looked like the nozzle was a little too high. So it wasn't extremely defined. It's right here now it is looking like it's going to be. Or I may have messed it up because it was in the middle of it when I changed it. But we're just going to leave it that way. Back there, I got the uh, Flexi Factory Night printing in gold filament. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, Matt, after this bench it gets done, I'll give my final thought on it. It's probably going to be a little bit, or maybe halfway through. I don't know. I just want to see the walls on the side, if I'm going to get any Z-banding or not. Uh, Michael, I keep I keep calling Michael Matt earlier. I'm sorry, Michael. I was talking to you a few times, and I said Matt. I think. If you're even still here, I don't know. But uh, yeah, Matt, I just want to see the walls to see if I'm getting any Z banding or anything, and uh, and then um. Cut it off. You can see, like with the SVO6, I did this benchy here. And it looks really good. It was that green filament that I did the bad bar with that came out very, very, very smooth on his. I don't know if you can see it in the back. Yeah, you can kind of see his coat over there. I mean, it looks like injection mold. It is so smooth. I think that was actually 0.24 layer height even. And I'm beginning to wonder if uh, thicker layer height can be better sometimes because I've, I've noticed some people switching to the uh, 0.06 nozzle because they said it prints better and faster. I got somebody here that wants to say hi. Let's see if we can get him up here. Come here. Come on. He's down there licking my leg. Come here. Oh, there he is. I get to say hi, Hanzo. This is Hanzo, my kitty cat. He likes to bury his head into my arms when I'm holding him. That's what he's trying to do. His way of hugging me. This one's big enough. It could probably hold you real easy. This Benji looks so tiny in the middle of this bed. <laughs> Now when I look at the SVO2 bed, I mean, from this one, it's, it actually looks smaller now. Hmm. I think it's a 240 by 280, SVO2 is.
Uh, yes, Matt. Abby has the SV06. I got her one for Christmas. And Spencer, too. He's got one in his room also. Abby likes to print cosplay stuff, cat stuff, wolf stuff, fox stuff, all kinds of crazy stuff. She'd been wanting to do masks, but the SVO6 could barely fit. I mean, the mask fits her face, but it needed to be just maybe an inch bigger and didn't have the room to print, so... I think if we do it on this one, we'll definitely have the room. We could print her a whole helmet on this. Hi, honey. Did you have fun at the restaurant? Huh? We ate dinner. Hamburger steaks on buns. Yeah. I don't know where my flashlight is so I can see the walls on this thing. Oh, there it is. It's hard to tell, but it looks like there's Z banding, but I'm not sure if it's actually there or if it's because I got thin walls. So you're just able to see the lines better because it's 0.4 less thick than I normally do it. I don't know, it's printing in thin air because I didn't have enough infill for that part. Whoop, well, it worked. It actually went on there. Huh. It literally just printed a floor in the middle of nowhere off of one line on both sides. The line straight down the middle. It printed a little flat square. Well, I guess the cooling works just fine. The people in my life? How long have you been on? I don't know, 12 hours? Mm -hmm. 
Well, if they don't want to see me, they don't have to keep their browser open. No, two hours and 25 minutes. That's what your text says. Where are you going? She's tired. That was Brittany. She says hello. She went and worked at the restaurant today. We'll go tell him. We'll just go get it. Turn it off then. It's on Xfinity. All right, let me check it again here. Can't really see the lines when the light's directly on it. I can only really see it whenever the light is above it. I guess that's because it's coming from the inside out. I'm almost done, man. It'll just be maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 more minutes. Then you'll be able to rewind. I don't, you may be able to rewind. I don't know. Can you rewind during the live and go back to see the beginning like you can on YouTube? I tried figuring out how to stream on YouTube and Facebook at the same time, but I couldn't figure it out. Well, that's cool. It made a line for bridging. And now it's printing the floor. There's not much infill, so it looks kind of raggedy. How did the quality turn out, Matt? Is it pretty smooth looking? CR10, maybe that's the one I was thinking of. That's the huge. That's the one with the huge bed.
Finally got that floor straightened out. I'm going to end up falling asleep. I'm hoping it'll get up into this part where it prints the hole into the side of it. I was going to clean that chair out for you, but I thought you said you was going to bed. Because she told you to, so put it down. Because you were caught watching porn on it, that's why. And she's not ready to give it back to you yet. You're lucky you got a little bit of time on it already. Well, I mean, he knows why. He's the one forcing the argument. I let him on there because he was playing with Liam or whatever his name is. And I only told him to go upstairs because I didn't want him on down here screaming and yelling while I was doing this live.
There it is. I definitely wish I had some iron channel. Trying to remember what I did last time to fix the heat banding. He ain't going nowhere. I meant to go to Target today and get some more CO2s and I forgot. I remembered when I went to make something a drink. You know, she's been up there for 15 minutes or so. Mine was? Well, then she stole it. And that's why she ran upstairs real quick. No. So why don't you go check? Is it still on? No, it's probably just... It disconnected or connected? Disconnected. Well, it doesn't make sense because it hasn't been turned on at all. Huh? She doesn't have it up there? I don't know. I don't know how it got to our bedroom. That ain't where I put it last. It was down here. Because I played that game two days ago. I never took it up there. And then, yeah, she took it up there. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. I'm telling you, it's not. Where's the remote? Because that remote had a gun in it. I printed a... I'll be
<laughs> yes, you did. Don't even try it. I wasn't trying anything. I haven't tried the new firmware on the SVO6, but I've heard it's really good. I usually only do things like that if I have a problem. Or if they need testing done. And I don't have any problems. And there's plenty of you guys to do the testing, so I haven't tried it. But I've heard it, some really, really good things about it. A lot of people are talking really good things about it. That's a gun that I printed on the SVO6 for the Oculus controllers. And by design, it has those little blemishes in the handle. I don't know why, but it's just the way it's made. But that's the Glock Oculus controller handle. It did crack right there. Because it's really thin, the shell that it's in. But I figured I'll just take the controller out of it. And rub some super glue on the inside of it or something and that'll hold it. It's still pretty neat. I mean, I guess if you're printing something for cosmetics, you wouldn't want to print this fast anyways. You would really only print this fast for functional stuff. And then again, it could be the filament. I'd have to print with one of my other good filaments to test that. The main thing is it really does print at 150 millimeters per second. Just need the fine tuning to maybe get the lines out of the side of it. Which honestly I don't know much about because almost everything that you see that I've done is just from stock settings. or I'm not much of a tweaker. I don't really mess around with stuff like a lot of people do. And to be honest with you, most problems that I've had, I tear the machine down, take it apart, put it back together, and it fixes it usually. And we've gotten a lot of questions about the uh, crunching sound. This one is not doing it. Like the SVO6 does. I'm almost certain they greased up the bearings on this. It's very quiet as far as the bearings goes. And for those of you that weren't here earlier that may not have heard or seen, 
the filament roller up top has bearings in it. So it now spins. It's not just a stationary cylinder. It does rotate. You hear that, Brittany? The cylinder for this filament holder on this one, it rotates. So now when the filament roll rolls, this whole cylinder rotates. It has bearings in it. <laughs> well, they've, they always ask people in the community, you know, what would you like to see the printer come with? You know, what with some upgrades, you know, and they picked out what they thought they could do. You know, a little bit at a time, they give you a little bit more and more and more. And it also came with this freestanding filament runout sensor already on it that just swivels in midair. It prints a lot faster, 150, whereas I use my SVO6 usually on 60, and I think the max for it was 120. Those are Flintstone vitamins. It's what they taste like. It's what they taste like. Try one. Sure. I thought they would be better. Since the gum is amazing. <laughs> They're not. Are you a little disappointed too? Plus it comes in crappy flavors really. Orange and yellow. Like who's going. I didn't even try a red one. I got the orange and yellow. It's all, does it taste a little funny at first? Which color did you get? Yeah. Mine tastes like Flintstone vitamins. Abby, when did you put that rabbit there? <laughs> I didn't realize it was up there. I've got the glasses for him. I know I told you guys that I would post a picture when I finished. So here's the glasses. Um, it's supposed to be clear PETG. And I could I got all of it clear except for well, not perfectly clear, but mostly clear. Except for there's a line in the middle of the lenses that I could not figure out how to get rid of that line. I did print some of them that were perfectly clear. Those aren't perfectly clear like the other ones were. But I had some that were like glass, but it still had that line straight up and down the middle. I could not get rid of it. Don't know what to do to get rid of it. I was wondering the same thing. Go put it over there, Abby. I was wondering the same thing about the uh, SVO6. If you could just take this tool head and unscrew the other one and screw this tool head onto the SVO6. Oh, I just noticed I did not move this down into the holder. There we go. Now it's in there. And nobody noticed it. <laughs> I'm glad it didn't come unplugged. That's the one I said. Yeah, that's the first one. It tastes like a Flintstone vitamin, doesn't it? Yeah, that'd be awesome, Michael. I could imagine you could print really fast with the SVO6 with it being a smaller frame and not shake as much. You know, it's not as much weight thrown around. I've got all the wood to build my table. I need to build it. It's just been so cold. Then it got real hot. Like, it went from being in the 30s and 40s to the next day being in the 70s and then the 80s and then back down to the 40s.
It's bridging pretty well. Well, there you go, phone farmer. I've never had any problems with my first layer on the SVO6. But I mean, it's the same like whenever you buy a car, you know, not all car qualities are the same either. Oh no. What happened? The print's coming off the bed. Uh oh. I think the speed killed it. What was that? Oh no. It didn't matter, Brittany. It's done. It was right there where it's making that floor. All right, stop it, Abby. How? Oh. oh. Stop button. Yeah, smoking. look, it came off. It was smoking. Needed, uh, that was me, Abby. I'm vaping. Oh. Needed more brim. There was no brim. I guess it was printing too fast when it started doing this floor. At the front of the boat, I seen it knock it off the bed. You got to figure on this print, there's words on the bottom with voided space. So, it wasn't a solid print all the way through on the bottom anyways. Uh, Z-banding. No, not really. The lines that you see is just normal lines, basically. I mean, there's a little bit. Like maybe on one layer. Actually, it looks pretty smooth. The words on the bottom are made out pretty well. You can read the ghosting in the back. The blur letters or whatever they are. Somewhat, anyways. Looks like it. Yeah, it says 3D Benchy on the back. I never realized that. I mean, it looks like it was going to come out pretty smooth. I needed more brim. At that speed, I guess. Abby, can you hold that a little bit closer to the camera? It doesn't matter. One thing I can't really see is uh, the start and stop points. Looks like my Z height might have been a little... Well, remember, I changed it when I started because I told you it was, I felt like it was a little too high. So that could be what ended up causing it also as I changed the Z height in the middle of the print. So overall, it looks like this wire bundle up here needs to have something done with it because it just hangs. And if I didn't have the zip tie at the top of it, it wouldn't be hanging up there like that. So that's something, if you purchase one, you're going to have to address. Um, the wire in the back that goes to the hotbed needs to be addressed. Mine got caught in the beginning in between the bed and the frame. And when it homed, it thought the center of the bed was up here on top. And me and Abby was a little confused at first because when it was auto leveling, it started like right here on the second row of squares around the top of them. Um, other than that, there's, 
couldn't really find any other problems with it. We got a lot of people that are more in detail about how they look over their machine that may find something with theirs. I did notice that this coupling holding the z-axis screws this one over here on my left your guys is right is down a little bit further towards the stepper motor than this one over here this one over here has a little space and a lot of times i told people to check the distance between this blue piece down to the coupler but that's because on my sv06 it's the same distance on here if you did that it would be off so you got to check from here down to the actual stepper motor some people use soup cans i don't like to use soup cans because soup cans they check in here and it's best to check further out you get a more accurate reading the further outside that you go so i don't know if the filament runout sensor works it's plugged in i couldn't find anywhere on the screen to disable steppers i'm sure i might be able to if i check further or read the manual um I couldn't find out how to disable steppers and I couldn't find out any settings for the runout sensor and for the PID tuning. I couldn't set a temperature. They wanted me to set values for P, I, and D, which I don't even know what that stuff means because I always just went by the temperature and the default settings on my other printers and just told it to basically, hey, make sure you stay at this temperature and trusted that the other default settings were correct. I don't do much with that stuff. Because again, I've never had an issue to where I needed to deal with it. Make sure you put your power supply on 115. Because we did not. And we had four drum rolls to get it working. But thanks guys for watching. If you have any questions, you can see me in the group. You can message me, ask me anytime. And if you ordered this machine, I think you're going to love it. I think it's great. So... Thanks for watching.